Hey there, good afternoon, and welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph, and I'm the host of this show. Today, we're going to ex do one of those live experiences, doing a live album that uh, I liked quite a bit in the original time period that uh, I got it back in the 70s. It was one of my first live albums. Not my first one, but one of my first ones. And uh, it's one of those albums that I think uh, has a lot of merit. Um, I have a lot of attachment to it. And we're talking about this album, Rush's All the World's a Stage live album. Okay, so a few things about this album. Um, first of all, it was released uh, this September the 29th, 1976. It was played at Massey Hall, a venue in Toronto. I've been there a few times. The last concert I went to was there for Dio. Um, <clears throat> the album's length is about 79, 80 minutes in length. Um, it was on the Anthem label, of course, and produced by Terry Brown and Rush. Now, um, and of course, the, the three members of the band that appeared on this album, Getty Lee, lead vocals and bass, Alex Lifeson, guitars and backing vocals, and Neil Peart, drums and percu percussion, excuse me. Anyways, the album is a bit of an end of an era for Rush, kind of signals the end of their hard rock kind of heavier rock era um, they they did this quite a bit um, actually I think they did this all the time where they would do four studio albums and then release uh, a live album I actually Kiss did this too with their first two live albums they did their first three then a live three more and then a live it's the same kind of thing kind of concept here um, the only thing is that when this album was finished Rush was at that point, you know, if you look at their music discography after that, they became very progressive rock oriented. Um, and their music changed somewhat dramatically from the first four albums to the next four. Um, which, for me, the albums that followed after the original four albums, after this live album, I think are overall better quality and better, more of the rush that I like. However, the stuff that came prior to this album was still fantastic. And they do a um, fair, 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 fairly equal split of songs from all four albums, which is good. You know, I think I think that's fantastic. So um, we'll just talk about the songs in general. They open up with Bastille Day, a pretty heavy song and uh, uh, pretty stable for them opening up. This was a normal this album was a normal set list from the 2112 tour. So uh, Bastille Day opened up Anthem, which is one of my favorite songs, of course. Played second to the Bastille Day. Both both very heavy, kind of heavy, rocky songs. Uh, Fly By Night and In The Mood together. Two of their lesser hits, but still hits nevertheless. They played together on this album. And Something For Nothing, an, a somewhat underrated song, but still a pretty heavy and the version on here is much heavier than the one on the uh, 2112 album lakeside park which of course is my favorite rush song i prefer the studio version to this version but rush is also fairly known for being somewhat pretty accurate with the, what their studio albums sound like their songs sound the same in concert uh, there's just a live effect and uh, it's quite good this album um the next one up is their seminal album uh, at that time period, the one that put them on the map, uh, 2112. All the tracks on here except for um, uh, The Dream and, uh, what is it, The Oracle. Oracle, The Dream, and The Discovery are not on this presentation of this. They were omitted from the album for time constraints. Um, when this album was first made back in... 76 it was on uh, an LP of course so it was a double album on an LP and when they transferred it to um, the CD format in that time period when they first did it the CD format um, could only do about 75 minutes on a disc so they cut those two tracks and I think what you're doing was originally cut as well from that and they since have added that and more stuff to the uh, to the more uh, up-to-date uh, remastered versions of this album I have one of the this is uh what year was this remastered done I don't 
see it anywhere but I've had this album for a long time so it's probably uh, fairly close to an original copy of the album I, I do have um, what you're doing on here so it's not the original copy of the CD but um, it's not um, also it's not a totally remastered version okay the other songs on here the next song on here by torn the snow dog I love this view version of it not as much as the studio version they they do a little bit more um, uh, acoustic kind of parts in the middle I don't know I don't know if they're really acoustic but they're softer sounding uh, parts in the middle of the song which they don't do on the uh, fly by night album um, in the end another cool track um, doesn't I don't think it gets much play anymore but in that time period it was played quite a bit um, and then of course we get to the rather large and production and wise uh, working man and finding my way they they combine the two songs here Alex Lifeson does a humongous guitar heavy guitar riff beefy guitar riff and a, and a very classic Alex Lifeson guitar solo on this and that is of course followed um, towards the end of the song by uh, Neil Peart doing his first kind of official drum solo with the group on an LP and it's fantastic of course uh, he's gotten much more inventive in later years and added a lot of different stuff but uh, this gives you his real classic heavy drum solo that he used to do quite a bit um, and then of course it finishes off with what you're doing which is to me the kind of Led Zeppelin -y song um, signifying kind of an end to a, an era of music um, yeah they played some of these songs in later um, uh, in their concerts and have continued to play them in their albums but the they started moving away towards a more progressive sound at this point with their next album Farewell to Kings so there you have it rush live good experience um and the venue is good like you don't get this kind of venue on their uh, upper coming live uh, venues which they do like on on their next live album which is exit stage left and then you know on the rio albums or any of those because it's played at massey hall which is a much smaller venue so it's it, it got that kind of um small venue feel to it anyways great album um Rush's first live and a wonderful experience um, I was too young at the time to go to this um, and I really didn't know much about Rush I, I maybe have heard a little bit by, by at this point but not a lot so um, you know I've since enjoyed a lot of this and this album just brings me back to that and I had a friend in high school who really uh, loved their live stuff and played this album quite a bit and that's when I went out and got it so there you have it a live experience that uh, I never got to actually have live but you know because a lot of this stuff is recorded you can experience it at home as well so there you have it um, all the world's a stage by rush 1976 and I hope you like the video if you like this kind of video and want me to do more live stuff please uh, like and subscribe and let me know leave a comment about what you'd like to hear more of and that's great so there you have it, Prog Monster, having a good day, and we'll talk to you soon, or see you soon. Take care.